we may come back to Frank because he's not showing everything correctly. Um, next is uh, Bucci, our speaker. Bucci Akpe, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. This is Bucci, um, president of Rotary Club One. I'm calling in from Houston. Thank you very much. We'll hear more about him uh, from him later. Carol Steen, welcome. Thank you. I am uh, a way past president, 2010-11. Uh, I was president the first year that we officially became, oh, that's an interesting shot of my dining table. <laughs> um, Oh, that's because my computer's over there, and I, okay, I'm going to turn that off. You know, the invisible <laughs> woman. <laughs> well, there are, certain past presidents are excused. That's right. Thing. So yeah, and try I'm, again. I'm a very, very past president, um, but I am serving on the board this year um, in the past president capacity, and um, I'm very happy to be here. Um, when I became president, it was the first year that we had um, official sanction from RI. And all the time that I was studying to be president, I kept thinking, am I just going to have to figure out how to turn off the E-Club e sign and go home? Um, because we really didn't know. And now look what has happened throughout the world. It's just so popular and it's such a thrill to see um, all of the different clubs and the way people do things. Awesome, Carol. One more question. Where are you located? Oh, yes, I am in the little town of Wallace, North Carolina, where it is very hot. <laughs> okay. Welcome to our club and our meeting. Look forward from you later. Next, uh, Chris Thomas, could you please introduce yourself? Depending on what your picture looks like, you may want to turn it on. But if you have chairs like Carol, that would be great too. Uh, yes, I am in the kitchen, but uh, <laughs> that's I'm, okay. Uh, yes, Chris <laughs> Thomas from uh, fr from Australia, and All it's, right. uh, it's already tomorrow for you. So um, it, it's currently what is it nine thirty five here uh, in Australia on uh, what's today Wednesday morning, um, and it's uh, uh, I'm currently the uh, E Club One secretary, and uh, this is my second year, and uh, looking to do another year next year. So I'm uh, doing the full three years. Uh, currently outside, well, we've had probably I don't know ten mil of rain last night. That's probably about six degrees. Uh, not roughly not which there. area? Roughly this which is, area? Australia? Are you? Where uh, in it's Australia? Called, called South Australia. We have uh, eight states, and and. Uh, we're in the yeah. southern uh, Australia. Okay. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, Look forward you. to hearing more from you. Next, David Warrett. Where are you? I'm right here, uh, Peter. Hello, everyone. I'm David Warrett. I'm in Rotate since 1992. I'm a charter member of this club and um, I'm the uh, current treasurer. And uh, uh, Chris, you said in South Australia, I was interested in whereabouts in South Australia you are, We've traveled through there, maybe been to uh, some area. Yes, well, uh, uh, capital city is uh, uh, Adelaide and we're about three hours drive north of uh, the capital city. Uh, it's called the Mid North. Um, some people know the Clare Valley, which is where all the wine is. We're an hour north of that. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank I've, I've been to a club in the Clare Valley Club. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you can't hide. You can't hide from anybody anywhere. No. Um, <laughs> welcome, David. And next, uh, Doug Dyer. Doug, where are you today? He, uh, 
charter member and past president of the Rugby Club Canton. Uh, I travel full time and currently on the beautiful island of St. Vincent in the Grenadines. Okay, we do not have uh, a picture. We did hear uh, we did hear your introduction though, with some beeping in the background too. So, uh, welcome, Doug. Yeah, lousy internet. <laughs> well, this is the, in, the mo in the most beautiful places. John K, you have some Americans on uh, in the club in uh, attending. John, you're not the only one today. Yeah. Hi. Uh my name is John Kay. I am secretary of the E Club of Canada, and I live in Blaine, Washington. Um, it's my job to uh, explain U.S. politics to all my Canadian <laughs> members, and um, that only takes about forty to fifty hours a week. <laughs> 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 and none, none of us listen anyway, so that's okay. You can't John. Understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, John. Glad to have you. Um, Sharon and Andine, can you introduce yourself? Just wait till we. Okay, here we go. Hello, I'm Undine Miller, and I believe I'm one of your uh, latest members as of March. Uh, the E Club of Canada. I'm very happy to be part of this, and uh, I look forward to um, to a great uh, assembly to tonight. And I wanted to wish everybody uh, a good evening and a good morning. <laughs> and I'm Sharon Blaker, and this is a great opportunity for my friend Undine and I to get together and drink wine and have some fellowship amongst the two of us, as well as the larger fellowship with you folks. I'm a past president of the Rotary Club of Chilliwack, and we live in Chilliwack, British Columbia, which is also cold and very rainy. Ellie, waiting for some sunshine here, and looking forward to hearing Bucci talk. Is it Bucci? Yep, Bucci yeah. is the name. So looking mm -hmm. forward to that. All right, welcome ladies. Don't drink too much wine because you would lose concentration. Besides, I want to remind you that you are in charge of the quiz later on, too. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> awesome. Next, uh, Tammy and Frank, are you there? Can you introduce yourselves or whoever is there? Hi, Peter, Ellie, everybody. It's Tammy here in Red Deer, Alberta. Okay, is Frank there too separately or what? We're confused because we don't have a picture. I've got a really poor connection. Okay, we can hear you well. Oh, no, don't. He, uh, he's on. Uh, oh, Frank, Frank is don't on. Frank. Yeah, careful, Frank. You may kick out everybody. Don't do that. On the big. Uh, Frank, you made yourself computer. I'm on my cell phone because, and he's not. And no, and Frank, you got to put make Ellie the presenter again. I'm going to stand by the uh, transmission. Okay, Ellie is back. Good. Thanks, uh, Frank. Frank is our. Um, uh, current president, Tammy is his wife. They're both Rotarians and both members of our club for uh, those of you that uh, that don't uh, know them. Maybe Frank will ca get a little bit better connection later and we can see him then uh, some more. Vicky, where are you today, Vicky? Hello, Vicky. Can you hear me? 
for their visitors. We have people in, uh, you know, Vicky is in Guatemala. And uh, so sometimes our connections are not, uh, are not the greatest. There she comes. Here I come. I pushed the wrong button and it all went away and I had to get it back. So, no, I'm still in Guatemala. I tried to blame it on the internet. I tried to blame it on the internet. Okay, well, blame it on the internet. It was all the internet's fault. I never do anything wrong on the internet. <laughs> no. I noticed that everybody has their everybody has their mic on, turned on, and maybe that's why Frank's connection was so bad because so many people have their mic on. No. Anyway, here I am in Guatemala. It's uh, nice and warm, but it's not sunny. We're into the rainy season, and it's uh, raining right now. But no snow. So, hello, everybody. Okay. Good. We have um, somebody on the phone, David Amen, I think is your name. Can you introduce yourself? Yes. Hello, Peter. Can you hear me? Yes, David. Okay. So I've, I'm not a past or present any useful office, and I never will be. Um, <laughs> unlike all these wonderful people on the phone, and the reason for that is because I spend several hundred hours every year organizing RILA, five RILA camps for 700 kids. Oh, wow. And, um, the, um, and as I said, I'm in Denver, Colorado, and you have no picture of me, but I'm six foot four and I'm wearing an Outback hat that I picked up in Melbourne, Australia, which keeps off the sun and the rain perfectly well. Awesome. Glad to have you uh, and uh, be with us, uh, uh, David. Uh, Frank, I know you're trying to get in. Can you say something? I just like to remind Frank that in order to show his video and in order to talk, he does not need to be the presenter. Yeah. <laughs> He's shaking the I presenter know. away. I know. Taking that again. Okay. So let's get on with the program. Let's on, yeah, yes. Please do. Okay. Um, I just have a, a, a little short story to tell before before I uh, call Bucci up here. Uh, it all started with um, actually an email from David Warrett to the president of the Rotary E Club One to ask permission to use some of the material that they have used for uh, potential members. And um, David copied me on that and, uh, and I thought, hey, that would be a really good um, way to connect with the e -Club One, the very first one in the world. And so I asked, I invited uh, Bucci if uh, he would join us and some of his fellow members. And here he is. So I will let uh, Bucci talk a little bit about their club. Uh, we can maybe learn something, but maybe tell a little bit of details about uh, the kind of program, how their meetings. I have made done makeups with that club, and um, when I first started, and I um, have been communicated with um, uh, the other Australian who was like, you know, the one in top. I think his name was also Chris. But anyway, uh, Bucci can tell me that uh, that name. So um, please welcome Bucci. Oh, thank you very much. And when you said you're not Australia, I was on top. I just know that said, yes, Chris is really on top. Yeah. Uh, you're referring to Chris Jocelyn. He's one of our past presidents and um, he's also one of the original members of the club. Um, he still remains part of our club, and we um, he's been a wonderful resource for us, just like most of the more older members of the club. I'm happy that Carol is with us today, so she will be able to fill in the gaps as to um, her club of praise, leadership um, structure, and historical perspectives. So um, as you all know, ours is one of the first club, um, one of the first e, e club, basically where the experiment on which um, all this um, was founded. And that was back in 2002. 
And here we are 15 years later, the club is still standing. We have 72 members. And when I talk to people and I say we're 72, and we spread across um, 13 countries, all the time zones, people wonder how we still, um, you know, how we're still able to make it. And one of the things I say is that our staying power has been that most of our founding members has been with us. And that we lay emphasis on us being a regular Rotary Club and that technology is simply a tool by which we do our Rotary work. We require all our members um, to do community service in lieu of physical meeting being face to face with each other and we require at least 12 hours of community service um, every quarter. So we, we have this tool on our club work, um, clubhouse, which is the members only session of our website where every month we expect you to report the service that you've done in the previous four weeks. That way we keep track of what every single member is doing and um, where they are. Unlike most newer e-clubs, ours is truly without uh, many geographical boundaries. Like I mentioned earlier, we we are across um, all the literally all the time zones, but in 13 physical countries, and uh, that presents challenge in having um, weekly meetings. It presents challenges in having real-time meetings like this. So our weekly meetings are in, in a synchronous manner. We um, call it a weekly forum. Every week we have a different member leading the club's meeting with a topic of their own choosing. The club's leadership doesn't determine what we get to discuss. And that's the meeting usually starts on Wednesday. And over the next seven days, you have different members coming in and um, dropping in. You, you often have a couple of members coming several times, dropping their own notes. So we'll say our meeting lasts a seven day period. I've likened it to um, hearing you very working. well on the big computer. You say what? Okay. So no, keep um, going, keep going, keep, keep going, no problem. Okay. So I'm liking it to you um, being able to walk into your club meeting at any time after the meeting has started and still be able to know what has been discussed before you arrive because if you, you're able to read through and see what everybody has been talking about, what the contest is. So you really don't get to start asking, oh, what's that person talking about? Because you could, you could read up on it. Now, um, we, do we, does that mean we don't have real-time meetings like this? We actually do um, through our club assemblies, which we try to have every quarter. Um, during that time, um, we, we all come online like this. The, again, that's a challenge because what do we what, what when do we start our meeting start is it um on on tuesday as we tuesday here or on wednesday as uh, members who are in australia so but to make it fair to everyone in the club we um place most of our meetings to be mountain time colorado um and the significance of that is that's the home district for our club that's where our club started in boulder so we usually time our meetings in boulder time so uh, club assemblies and uh, board meetings are usually 2 p.m. Mountain Time, and um, that could be any other time in different local time zones, and they usually run one hour. So do every member get to attend these uh, meetings? Not really, but um, we do have at least up to 20 to 30 percent of our member being online during the club assemblies. And as for the board meetings, for some reason, almost every board member tries to make it, even irrespective of what the time zone is in their play in their own areas. So, um, which again, um, you, we realize the, what those um, sacrifices are. So, whatever business we could do offline, we could do in a synchronous manner. We try to um, do that and limit these real time meetings to when um, to once a month for the board, once a quarter for the entire club. So, but the key question, when we when we spread across the entire world in this way, and we have challenges in having real-time meetings, is how do we do Rotary's business? You know, um, Rotary clubs don't exist to meet. They exist for community service. How, how, how do we do it? How do we ensure that our members somehow feel connected to doing Rotary's work? 
you recall earlier when I talked about the man required um, us having a requirement that our members should have um, 12 hours of community service every quarter. Now, through those, um, through our members, we uh, carry out our projects. So rather than most scenarios where you have clubs having club projects, for us, we have club sponsored projects. What this means is that our members get to identify projects in their local communities and then be able to apply for club grants to um, support these projects. And in our club, we have a couple of grants to support what our members are doing. Um, a few examples are community service grants. Those are usually smaller grants. Um, in most that are usually that are designated for use by members in the community where they live. And the second is the international service grants. So a club with member in um, members are spread across 13 countries. It will be difficult to do, to um, how do I put it, to describe what an international service means because we are not in this look we are not in the same location. So our definition here is very loose, and in most cases, we find our members using this grant opportunity for projects that are outside their immediate vicinity. The other grant we have is the Youth Service Grant also. So our members are able to apply for any of these grant streams to support the project they are doing. The only request, the only requirement we have is that as a member, you be personally involved in those projects and not simply be acting as a conduit for um, money from us to another organization. And we also require that um, we submit a report at the end of it. That's the way we get, one of the ways we get um, the material we put in our makeup section. So um, so question that might come up will be, how do we get these funds that we give out as grants? Being that we are a club that basically needs using technology, not in the same location, and it may be difficult to um, have fundraisers. Over 90% of the funds that we give out as grants that we use in our club sponsored projects come from our website, from the generosity of our visitors to our makeup program. That's where um, the, bulk, the bulk of the money we spend in this area has come from. So we've been very happy that people are doing that, and um, we hope that uh, we'll continue receiving those supports. So um, what has it been for me, you know, being um, president of an e-club? I must say it's um, it's been it's been very it's been very um, exciting and challenging at the same time. Exciting in the sense that um, I get to interact with my club members on a different level that I have not interacted with them before. I've gotten to know um, many more of them in a more personal way, like um, what they do, where they are, and the limitations that they may have in participating in the club. And challenging in that, um, in terms of organizing meetings like this, in terms of um, budgeting purposes, and uh, trying to figure out um, how figure out how to be involved at the district level because in our districts uh, very um, I think for in, in our in our districts which is uh, 5450 we try to, um, to to remain connected with them my predecessors have done that and coming in trying to follow in that line um, to stay connected with a district that is a couple of miles away from where I personally um, reside, that's um, that I find sort of like challenging. And then attend rotary meetings where I sit down, apart from the general principles, most of the other details do not exactly relate to the experiences of my member and thinking about how I will adapt these experiences that are coming from other Rotarians to what's to scenarios in my club. That also has also been one challenge. But it's, it's excuse me, please. Sorry, I forgot to put off the phone. But one of the good things with all this is that um, I still have 
at least three to four of my past presidents in the with, still within the club. And whenever I run into all these challenges as to how to relate um, Terra Club concepts to e-club concepts, I really run around, run to them. One of those past presidents is um, Carol, who is here with us. Another is Chris Jocelyn, who um, Ellie mentioned earlier on. And they've been sort of like helpful, you know, and um, in other scenarios, I fall back on my on my board members also, because I would I would say that um, without that support system of having the past president and having the board, there will be um, there are times when I would say, oh no, this is getting too overwhelming. You know, I need to um, step back a little bit. But whenever I need to step back. I am comfortable that there are other people who would um, come in to take on any shortfalls that I might have. So, what's um, what has been um, some of our highlights in this in this particular road trip? One 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 of them has been. Uh, membership, which at the word get go, we had decided we we're going to focus on our members because while 72 might sound, you know, fantastic to most people, our club has um, not in the last five years, we've not gone below the 70 mark. We've been fluctuating between 70 and 80. So we, we do have um, people coming to our club almost on a monthly basis, most of them on the referral, referral from proteas who've done make off on our club website, some of that's referrals from our district. Uh, so, um, but it seems like as we're gaining members, we're losing members. So this year we set out to um, focus on engagement on membership retention, and that has sort of like paid off. Because so at the end of the third quarter of this road three year, our retention rate has gone up by 8% um, from last year. Our current retention rate is 87%, which um, we are comfortable with, and we hope that um, in the next year that we would improve on that. Because without without members, it's difficult to do road trips business. And another key to look at it also is that um, for operation of the club, you need members to be in the club to pay dues and for you to be able to um, to carry on. So we, we keep we keep trying to reinvent ourselves over these um, 15 years that the club has um, existed. The most recent reinvention is um, in the last eight months, where we um, we had to do a visioning process over a three month period. We have someone from the district coming to lead us through a visioning process that um, at least 50% of our members participated in where um, we went through our strengths, our weaknesses. Basically, we did a SWOT analysis and we arrived at a direction that the most majority of the members felt comfortable taking the club with. At the end of that visioning process, we also um, had to, um, that was last fall, review our bylaws and adopt the new um, road trip constitution. So this, um, I, I think that is one thing that has, another thing that has been our staying power, changing our rules and our guidelines to adapt to our current membership. And, um, you know, that has, that has helped us to stay abreast of things. And, and, and another thing is also being uh, aware of what is happening both in Rotary and in the uh, among Rotary e clubs. Like your club, we often uh, get inquiries from other e clubs, and when we when we do get that, we try to be as helpful as we could. And there's been instances when we've been the ones reaching out to some other e club, trying to um, find out what they are doing and how we could adapt them. Because while we may be the first e-club we understand that um the more recent e-clubs or other e-clubs that have come after us might have found um some maybe better maybe interesting ways to do rotary business that we could learn from so when you reached out to us earlier on and asking if we could come to your meeting i was kind of like excited you know because for me 
personally, I felt this was another learning opportunity for our club. And I'm glad that uh, we're here this evening. So um, at this point, I think I would, I would stop and take questions and allow other club members, other Rotary Club one members that are here to maybe contribute if they have a comment or two to make. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bucci. And, and uh, the process that I'd like to, to follow is if you have a question, please turn on your camera and I will give you the, the floor to ask the question as we go. Um, while people are clicking on that to try and do that, um is uh i saw hazel arrive and uh, hazel could you introduce yourself if you're still there <clears throat> hazel we hear a lot of static are you talking or? I can't hear you. Okay, good. We will uh, uh, open it up. Is, does anybody have uh, any question for, for Bucci or any of the other members of uh, the Rotary uh, E Club One? Please, I'm sure there are lots of. Uh, Lots of uh, questions that you want to uh, to ask. David Warrett, go ahead. Bucci, I wanted to ask what you did. You said about engaging the members for, to uh, get better members retention. Can you elaborate on that, please? OK. Um, if I, I'm not sure if I heard you well, but I think what I heard was um, I should elaborate on the percentage of our members who attend our club assembly. Is that correct? No, the question is, uh, his sound was not good. What specifically are you doing about retention of the members? Like you have an increase in that, but especially about retention. Okay. so. Um, I'll focus on this past year because this past year we've um, we've really done a lot, so I wouldn't go um, beyond that. So at the beginning of this Rotary year, uh, we we um, decided to um, bring up the club's original charter, which was uh, where we laid more emphasis on community service versus meeting attendance. So um, that was one of the things we did at the beginning of um, the Rotary year, getting everybody to report their community service and um, we moved the world from meeting attendance to member engagement so trying to uh, we created a committee that was responsible for uh, maintaining a dashboard that tracks what each member was doing so we're no longer talking about proportion that attended meeting or proportion of members that are engaged and we had uh, a couple of ways in which you could be engaged one is involved in a club committee being on the board, attending meetings, and um, serving, uh, being on any of the RI um, fellowships. So we, our membership directors took this a step further and created a point system, which allows for each of these engagement items to be scored. So we, we now have um, a minimum points which um, we require members to have um, in, in a quarter, in a year, and in a month. So all this is still a work in progress. So, but the key emphasis is, is on moving away from, did you attend meeting or did you not attend meeting to, to going to, are you engaged or are you not engaged? And having these multiple streams of ways by which a member of the club could be engaged. Thank you. Thank you very Thank good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else, any questions? Um, this is Carol, and I'd like to add one more thing um, to what Bucci just said. We also have our, we have two wonderful uh, membership chair, co-chairs, and they divided the club into three groups, and uh, they've asked uh, past presidents to uh, take over one sort of acting as a, um, as 
friends to one third of the group. So we send out announcements and uh, encourage people on their reporting their attendance and all. And that has worked out really well, I think, to bring the group together. Thank you, Bruce. Uchi and others, can you tell me what um, communications uh, platforms you have used, video conferencing and others uh, have tried and used and found the best? Uh, I, I don't know that I would, that I would say we found the best. Um, a couple of years back when I joined the club, we were on Club Runner, but I think back then Club Runner was still very much rudimentary and it wasn't allowing us a lot of the flexibility that we needed. So we uh, started shopping around for a new um, web host, web manager, where we could have both our public and private website together. Because while we are club runner, club runner hosted our clubhouse, and we had a different interface on a different um, host for our public website. So we got this uh, web designer, our current um, webmaster, who um, has a proprietary um, web hosting software. I think he runs on Linus and is able to host both our public section and, and the members only section for us. So since our weekly meetings are in forum formats, that really doesn't present a problem to us, even though uh, we're hoping for more interaction between members on that website. And currently we're discussing about overhauling our current website. In terms of real time meeting, what we currently use is go to meeting. Now, um, is it the best? Probably not, but among um, the others that we've evaluated this year, it seems um, to have much more, um, it seems to be better in terms of affordability. And personally, I think um, it's also better in terms of bandwidth, because like you, we have members in um, areas where the, either the data service might be poor or the internet might be poor and we need them to be able to connect during real time meetings like this. And I personally have found GoToMeeting to, uh, to be better as long as you're not using video compared to um, other video intensive platforms. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else? While you are thinking about a question, I have a question for you, Bucci. Do you have a system in place to record voting? Voting in board meetings and voting for membership when that's needed. How do you handle that? So um, voting for the general membership, we've basically um, used, we've alternated really, we've not used one platform. We've alternated between using SurveyMonkey and using Google Forms, where um, and we because those two platforms allow us to be able to collect those from um, collect the votes and be able to be sure that the vote is restricted to our membership. Among the board, in, during um, real time board meetings, we it's our votes are usually voice votes and the secretary documents that in the minutes. But if it's an off-cycle vote, we, it's, we take email votes. Everybody sends their um, votes to the secretary and the secretary collates those also and announces it to the board. Does that answer the question? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. That was, so that's good because those are the different options out there. And, uh, and, and so we... We don't we don't use Google Forms or anything else, but we at the board meetings do the voting as well. Being a smaller club may be a bit easier, uh, you know that matter too. And we have, even though we do have about five time zones, it's not as many as uh, I don't even know how many there are in the world. But you have too many time zones for that matter. Um, right. Other questions, please. I'm sure there is more that you guys want to ask. Any other comments from uh, any of the uh, of the E Club One members? So Peter, would hey, like David, to add. Yeah. yes, yes, David. And so, I understand you are based in Canada, but it sounds like your members are spread pretty far and wide, also including yourself, right? 
Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, in the Dominican Republic, which is Atlantic time zone. Uh, right now is Eastern time zone. We have in our club uh, the, um, people in Alberta, which is mountain time, um, people in uh, British Columbia and, uh, and Washington, which is, you know, other time zone. Um, then in Ontario as well. And then we have those that travel around in different areas like Doug is in, in uh, St. Vincent right now and, and uh, Vicky is in, in Guatemala. So, but basically what we do, and that is, that is to when do you have your meeting, what is convenient, um, it is to, you know, three hours difference um, between the groups that, uh, that have to call a meeting. So that's why we're, we have it right now uh typically at six o'clock mountain time because we're in district 5370 which is the northern part of, Al of alberta and, uh, and so that's how we uh, handle it which means it's eight o'clock in ontario and it's five o'clock in british columbia and that five o'clock is maybe too early for some at times too so whether you whether you want to alternate that then we you know and change that but then it becomes confusing for people to realize when they're going to have their meeting. That's another uh, negative side of that, I think. Have you, uh, have just, you worked on We just talking? recently uh, uh, got a, a member, a new member in Germany, and we got a new member in the UK. So we are about to have the problem. <laughs> well, we already have Sounds it, John. <laughs> <laughs> but Peter, my That's comment right. was remarking on the fact that you do have people spread across just a few time zones, but across many, many miles, which is just ideal for an e-club. That's wonderful to hear. Yes, well, anytime you talk Canada, it's miles, lots of miles, obviously. You know, we have uh, lots, of, uh, lots of space between us, which is good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, kilometers, no, miles, whatever, Ali. Don't get tricky, yeah. uh, picky. <laughs> Light years, whatever we wish to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other uh, questions for uh, for Bucci and or um, David and Carol and Hazel? Well, I, uh, as there is no, no more questions at this particular time, um, first of all, we do record this meeting and it will be available on YouTube. We uh, just recently uh, put together an, a new website where all our uh, fellowship assemblies will be, uh, um, will be available for anybody to watch um, at a later time. And this one will be there within a couple of days also. So those that have not attended can uh, can then uh, listen to uh, what we discussed. Bucci and others of the Rotary E Club One, um, thank you so very much for taking the time to join us to explain about how you are doing. And I, I think we're all struggling with with uh, um, similar issues and and have to come to a solution on on how to adapt to that. But every, we realize that there's now, since you guys started, over 300, more than 300 e-clubs in the world. Um, I find it interesting that we don't see too much yet on the program in Atlanta where some of these issues are uh, to, be, uh, to be addressed. And I think that is something that we may have to do and exchange uh, information in a more uh, uh, structured way uh, within Rotary International as well to get things uh, straightened out with that. Again, on behalf of our club, thank you so much for, uh, for being here. I hope you can stick around and attend the quiz that uh, uh, Sharon and Dean uh, put together, which we will follow up with right now. Um, oh, turn on your turn on your microphones and let's give him a them a, um, a great Alberta applause. You know because of some of them <laughs> Texans they think we have to do that all the time too. Thank you so much for uh, for being here. Yay. 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 Yay.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for inviting us and um, we appreciate it. I will stick around and I believe a couple of my members would also at least the idea is for us to also see how your meetings run and hopefully we will learn it in or two also from you. Good. And I'm looking forward to seeing you or somehow connect in, uh, even though I won't be able to attend the dinner that you're having, but still, I think we will be able to connect somehow, sometime in Atlanta. Look forward to shaking your hand there. <laughs> sure, I look forward to that too. Awesome. Sharon, um, yes. we are ready for the quiz. The floor is all yours. All right. So, Peter, how are we going to do this? Do people just answer, and uh, do we have teams? I'm I'm not sure how you guys I, normally run this. No, no, no. That's up to the presenter. So, you okay. just do oh. whatever you want to do. Okay. You know, so it, 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 the rotary okay. rules apply, and so you'll know who's going to win, right? Okay. All right. So, I I first want to quickly mention that love for rotary knows no boundaries and love for rotary knows no time zones that being said i'm uh, um, presenting along with sharon and we are the dream team from chilliwack <laughs> um uh, sharon is going to be ready to be present uh, to show the uh, the slides um, we chose to do a little bit, uh, share some kind of, some bit of knowledge regarding health and wellness, since that is my background. And so we would like to start. Okay, so I think and, what we'll so do... Before, let me just inter interject quickly. I want everybody to turn on the microphones because this is the fun part. And here is where we can shout and make lots of noise and uh, see if somebody indeed has an answer. To your okay, um, I'm going to leave it on the honor system, the four way test. If you've got the right answer, you write it down. And then at the end, we'll see how many of you have the right answers. Okay, um, and we'll leave a couple of seconds for discussion or whatever, and then we'll go to the answers. How's that sound? That's perfect. Yeah, no. Okay, here we go. Does everybody have the screen? We yes, do. it shows. All right, we're ready to go? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's just, uh, whoop, sorry. Ah, don't want to show. The answers. Here we go. All right. Hopefully you didn't see all the answers. Um, okay. The first question. Who originated the term aromatherapy? You're dealing with a spa, a spa owner here and someone who's had a lot of health problems, myself. So a lot of the questions are going to be around that and around um, spas. So who originated the term aromatherapy? Fashion designer Coco Chanel. Scientist Rene Maurice Gatfus. Gatfus, French surgeon Jean Valnet, or second millennium perfume maker Taputi. Who has the answer to that? So you should have included <laughs> the guy who invented the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> what has that got to do with aromatherapy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody? There's a rotary angle there if you talk uh, sanitation. You know. <laughs> All right. So your best answers, anybody? John, okay. you know. Okay, here we go. Aromatherapy. B. Here we go. B. Scientist Rene Maurice Gatfus. Gatfus. Anybody get that one? Never heard of him. Come All on, right. <laughs> it's not looking good. Okay, next one. What is alopecia? Baldness inherited from mother's male relatives. A medical term for constant hair pulling. C, medical term for hair loss. D, can't grow facial hair. Okay, yeah, gentlemen. No. C. No? C. C. It's B, yeah. medical term C. for constantly pulling hair. <laughs> Somebody said B? It's C, yes. It's All B. Right. Medical term for hair loss. 
There you go. <laughs> who said <laughs> that? I did. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I had a friend who had that problem when she was a kid. <laughs> Uh, everybody, everybody saw the question that Bruce Kleberger asked. That is referred to as Kleberger disease. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. What is stress? A term applied to psychological pressures. B affects types A and B personalities equally. <laughs> the rate of all wear and tear caused by life, aka wife. C, management is not possible without pharmaceuticals. All of the above. Yeah. No. <laughs> that is a choice. A. C? A. All right, let's go to the answer. C, the ra rate of wear is caused by life. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, next question. Which is true about nail infections? 20% of adults have fungal nail infections when 60 years and older. Sign of terrible personal hygiene. It only affects fingernails or B, it is untreatable. What do you think? A. A. A? Yeah, a. it's Canadian, eh? A. That's a Canadian answer. <laughs> All right. Okay. Twenty percent. He is right. And it doesn't have anything to do with personal hygiene, mostly. Okay. Here we go. Next one. Which peptic ulcer fact is false? A occurs in the lining of your stomach, caused by spicy acidic foods, caused by infection with the bacterium H. pylori. Three quarters of people with peptic ulcers do not have symptoms. Which one is false? B is in Bob. Who's answering? B, Vicky. Sorry, Dave here. Vicky? Okay. It's be Who B is in boy. Dave and Vicky. David? Okay. B is We're a team, David. All right, David. It's it only makes the symptoms worse. It's not cause it is not the causation of peptic ulcers. All right. This is the last which one. which are the causes of insomnia? A restless leg syndrome, B poor sleep hygiene, B diet, D all of the above. All of the above. What is poor sleep hygiene? Does that mean you don't wash your sleep? <laughs> <laughs> is that supposed to say sheep? Is that supposed to be sheep? No. <laughs> I think it has more to do with um, you don't wash yourself with wine before you go to bed. <laughs> like we're gonna with wine? Oh, that's good. I thought you're supposed to drink wine. <laughs> I know. And Dean and I are gonna well, say. Well, Vicky, imagine, imagine. <laughs> we could, what's the answer for? I know. You're supposed to wash your sheep with wine. There yeah. you go. The answer. All of the above. All right. All of the above. You got her. All right. That's it. Thank you so well, much. Very good quiz. So how did how did everybody great. do? Did anybody get four out of four? No, five out of five? How many questions were I think there? David and I got them all right. Right, David? Is that Vicky? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh. I, I got, got three. three. Okay, you uh, <laughs> Vicky and Dave, you got a special sticker. <laughs> all right. I actually was a keeping track of it. There you go. Um, that, Sorry, I just wanted to say thank you very much to Sharon because Sharon um, uh, uh, did the slideshow uh, for us. She prepared it, so we divided our time. So thank you very much, Sharon. That was a lot of fun, guys. Hope thank you, you enjoyed it. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ali. Wow, well, we are, uh, time is just perfect tonight. See, the wine glasses are hanging behind me, but they're all empty and hanging upside down. Going to have to do something. Um, thank you all for joining us. It was a real uh, learning experience also to have members from uh, Club One online. And uh, I hope we can uh, connect again in the near future. And we look forward to seeing some of you in Atlanta.
and uh, Ramiro will also be in Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, this session has been recorded, like Peter said, and uh, I will get that uh, going right away. So thank you again all for joining, and have a good evening from our morning from wherever you are. Good night. Thanks for having us. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye.